welcome back adventures with dr joe this is the fourth in the series of assembling the prusa xl it begins in a semi-assembled fashion we've already done three videos on that this is the fourth which is the heat bed and the side panels the side panels are are, are, are basically the same so it doesn't matter which one you use and we're going to connect it to these plastic clips and metal earthing connectors that we've put in here already we're going to use the three millimeter long eight number eight Torx screws, and we need a small um, screwdriver or a small Allen wrench to first line these up. To be sure we got the screws in the right place, and I've already taken the time to line up the gra the earthing ground and these two plastic um, connectors and then we'll do the other ones from inside so we've got the first one set up here we go this is the torque screwdriver that comes with the prusa it's a nice one i'm going to wait till all the screws are in before i really tighten them up so i'm just going to make it snug Then, got those plastic connectors, and again, you can strip these, so be careful. One thing you can do is you can backlight this and see on the inside where the, where the, where the light comes through and really be able to identify the location for the screws. Let's look at that. You can see how we've lined these up. You can see that, that opening there. So here's the first panel. Now, for the earthing connectors, once you get the screw in there from the inside, you need to tighten it into that slot. This one, it's obstructed, but Prusa, very clever people, they have two holes in here, and that allows the screwdriver to go through here and tighten that earthing connection in, in here. That's pretty clever, guys. So here we go. 10 screws. This adds a lot of rigidity to the frame, which is going to be helpful in the printing. We'll put the other side on next. So here we have the right side, and I've taken the panel, and I've tried to line up that first, first earthing connector, and I think I've got it pretty good. Remember, those are very loose, so don't tighten everything up here until we get everything on the inside tightened up. Then. Then we we'll use our two point, our, our very small. I think this is our T6 driver, just to line up the holes with the plastic connectors. And once once you got it, leave that little T6 driver in there. Just take it out. Should be lined up. Yep, there we go. Nice. So once we are, we can actually tighten up this one, which again goes through these two openings. Let's look at that. So I'm going to go inside here. get my connection with that earthing connector. Okay, I'm going to show you this is so hard to see, but there it is. Now I'm in that screw. There, I'm in that screw. That's how we tighten it through that through those two holes. Once all the screws are placed, then we need to go inside here and tighten each of these earthing connectors. This one again goes through those two holes up into it. But strongly connect those, make those really strong, then go back and tighten up all of the 
external screws. I'm going to tighten these up. Remember the plastic ones, don't strip those. The metal ones can be pretty tight. This adds a lot of rigidity, like I've said before, and structural support to the frame. Again, these are all T10. Be sure they're lined up perfectly inside, 90 degrees. There goes. Sorry. There we go. Set. Okay, the next thing we've taken the heat bed with the little notches to the left, put on some cardboard, unscrewed these four T10 screws, lift the cover off, and then we're going to connect these four connections. That's why we need a screwdriver, a Phillips screwdriver. We're going to connect those to the basically the umbilical cord coming out of the back of the printer. Now carefully lift up the heat bed, put a little cardboard underneath it that'll fit at that umbilical cord. You want to put this so the connections are down. Be very careful. connect those. So we keep this printed part on because it keeps everything oriented properly. Take the four screws out. We have a locking washer on each one which you want to save. Now take a look. There's a B and an A. And when you look at the little yellow tabs, A, B, so it can't go this way, it needs to go this way with the edge of the printed part down. So see which way turns more easily for you. This way. And we'll start connecting. Start connecting everything back. bit of a tight fit the screw Once you get the first one other ones are easier I know that it looked kind of intimidating initially when you look at it, but it's not that bad. So I'm getting them all started. And I'll turn and get it in there. And also the printed part has a B and an A, which correspond to the B and the A. And then the four connections are down and the opening for the clicking part is up, so this has to be turned around. Get it in there. Now we'll, t we'll tighten these up. Now to put the cover back on. Again, we need the T10. I kept it in the same orientation. Tighten these screws up as well.
Now it's time to remove these linear rail stoppers. They just come out like a small plug. I left all four of mine on. We'll take them all out now. Okay, now we're going to take the heat bed and get it threaded onto these rods. Lift it up. Put it over those rods. We'll start to turn those equally, keeping it level. And then we're going to want to thread these so we've got about five centimeters of rod above the bed. So we'll keep bringing that down until we have five centimeters of this rod above the bed, approximately. Try to keep the bed as level as possible, and if you can thread both rods at the same time, which I'm doing here, the best chance of keeping it pretty darn level. I'm going to get a ruler and measure each side. So we get the bearing housing. The bearings, they just fit in just like this. Nice. And then these three millimeter by ten, that takes a two and a half millimeter hex drive. It's like this. Put those on here. So these are those captive nuts that we need. And again, the bearing goes on top of the threaded rod here. We need to bring these in quite a, quite a way. screw in there. These are stainless, so they're, they're, they're not magnetic. These are stainless, they're not magnetic, so it makes it be nice if they're magnetic, they'd just be a lot easier to put in. Alright, that one went in, so line up the other side. Now we're going to connect the z-axis to the heat bed. So we bring these bars up. And we use these three millimeter by 12 Torx screws. One in each corner. Tighten them all the way, just tighten them snugly just a little bit. So we're going to tighten them in a special way. And then we'll do the Z axis on this side. Okay, for the Z axis on the left side, bring up that Z arm. Boy, it's nice when things fit like that. I will say everything about this Prusa has been very precise. So this will be fixing the Z-axis parts to the heat bed, and you do it in a certain order. We tighten the right front, the front right, over here first. Then the rear left, then the front left, and 
finally the rear right. So that's the correct sequence. Okay, so this is the umbil this is the umbilical cord, and these are the two screws that have to be fitted in. And you'll see where they go. Be sure not to get any of these wires stuck, which I did initially. And then they, they, they fit in there very securely, holding that on to the undersurface of the heat bed. All right, congratulations. We've got the heat bed, the side panels done. Everything's great. Next step is to put the extruder on, and we've got ourselves a printer. If this was helpful, please click thumbs up. Consider subscribing. Thank you.